My presentation today is on a study that the Institute for Energy Research commissioned to calculate the levelized cost of electricity from existing generation sources. And the reason why we wanted to look at that is that we wanted to compare those numbers with the cost of uh, lev the levelized cost of new technologies. Now, the levelized cost is defined to be the net present value of the total cost of construction, including finance charges, operation and maintenance costs, over a specified period of time for a generating unit. And it's expressed in dollars per unit of output, such as dollars per megawatt hour. Um, you'll see in the charts that we're using the notation LCOE for the levelized cost of electricity. Now, the levelized cost is a summary measure. It's used by the Energy Information Administration in their modeling work. It's used by other modelers as well as other analysts. And what we're trying to do here by using the term is to compare the cost of different sources of electricity generation, such as coal, natural gas, nuclear, wind, solar, and hydroelectric power, which we've done in this study. The Energy Information Administration just looks at the cost of new technologies. They don't look at the cost of existing technologies. And in their work, they look at the cost over a five-year period, well, five years in the future. And they do that because they assume it takes five years to build a new nuclear plant. Uh, they also have a certain set of assumptions that they use. They show their numbers based on capacity factors that are at the higher level of the ut utilization range for the technology. And we call those the best case capacity factors. And they use forecasted prices for the uh, cost of the fuel input to the generators. Now, um, levelized costs, as I said, include capital costs, fixed O&M costs, and variable O&M costs, including the fuel costs. They're uh, levelized over a financial life that EIA uses, and EIA uses a 30-year time period, and that becomes important, as you'll see later. If production is higher, the levelized cost for technology is actually lower. And as a result, the levelized cost is very sensitive to the capacity factor. The base year for our study is 2015. If you take a look at electricity demand 10 years before 2015, you'll see that it increased very slowly at a rate of 0.3% per year. So we really didn't need to build all the ca capacity we've been building in the past because we had a lot of excess capacity at the time. But in fact, we've been building wind units, solar units, and natural gas combined cycle units. And that's because of federal and state policy. It's already been mentioned by other speakers that many states had renewable por portfolio standards that mandated that a certain amount of of electricity generation within the state came from renewable sources at specified time periods in the future. But there were also subsidies, for instance, the federal produ production tax credit for wind and the investment tax credit for solar, and regulations such as EPA's mercury and air toxic standard and their clean power plan. Now, even though the clean power plan isn't in force as yet, there are states and there are utilities that are planning for it. The chart that you see here is from the Annual Energy Outlook 2015. And the point of the figure is that EIA expected the mix of generating technologies to change. And in fact, they already have. Um, coal is now down to 30% of generation, and natural gas is up to 34%. So we commissioned the study. And two researchers did the analysis, Tom Stacy and George Taylor. And the study is published at the address that you see on that chart. Now, the methodology that we used was to uh, use two databases that are available from the federal government. One is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC Form 1. And we got the most of the data that we needed from that survey. We got nameplate capacity, annual generation, capital expenses, operating expenses, and fuel expense. And that data is available online for 20 years. We used 1994 to 2013 data. But we had to cross-reference that data with an Energy Information Administration form, the EIA 860. 
Now, this chart shows the FERC Form 1, and it highlights the data that we took off of the form, and I've already mentioned to you what that data is. The next chart shows the cross-referencing that we did. Now, the reason for that is at one time, FERC had the Energy Information Administration clean the data, make sure that the numbers were in good uh, situation. But, um, in fact, the data now is not being cleaned, and we found a lot of data that was inconsistent or that was partially redacted. So we compared that to the EIA 860, and we were able to uh, plug some of the holes, and then we found some of the other data on the Internet. Where we couldn't plug the holes, the data were excluded from the analysis. So the components of the levelized cost were the construction cost with a repayment term of 30 years that EIA used, the ongoing capital expenditures, the capital expenditures for construction that had not been paid off yet, any upgrades in environmental equipment, operations and maintenance costs, both fixed and variable, and the fuel costs that we use for both existing and new were the 2015 average delivered prices rather than the forecasted prices that EIA used. Also, EIA did have a component for transmission investment in their uh, levelized cost calculation. But we added two additions to the analysis. One was we used actual capacity factors in 2015 rather than the best case scenario capacity factors that EIA used. The other was we added a term for the imposed costs. When you take non-dispatchable resources, such as wind and solar, what happens is that you back out the dispatchable resources from the um, grid, and as a result, they run fewer hours, and, but yet they still don't have a major reduction in their fixed costs. So these are imposed costs that we calculated. Uh, also, when you have to ramp up those technologies quickly, you also incur an additional fuel cost, and that's part of the imposed cost calculation. So this chart shows the results of our analysis. The first column of data that you see is the levelized cost for existing technologies. For coal, we got $39 per megawatt hour. For nuclear, we got $29 per megawatt hour. The second column that you see in the chart are the levelized costs that come from the Annual Energy Outlook 2015. And as I said, these particular costs are based on the best case capacity factor for the technology and on the forecasted fuel prices, and they're for five years in the future. Then the third column is the levelized costs that we calculated, and they um, are based on the 2015 delivered price for the fuel, and they're based on the uh, fleet average capacity factors in 2015. You can see for combined cycle natural gas, we got a lower levelized cost for new technology. It was $55 per megawatt hour compared to the 75 that EIA had. And the reason we got a lower cost was that the actual natural gas delivery fuel prices in 2015 were lower than EIA's forecasted prices in the future. Also, you can see we got a lower cost for nuclear, $90 per megawatt hour versus the 95 that EIA is using. And the reason there is that the capacity factor for nuclear in 2015 is actually higher than EIA's assumed best case capacity factor. Now, if you look at the bottom of the table, you'll see for the intermittent sources, we had no uh, information on what existing wind and solar power would cost. And that's because there was not enough information in the FERC Form 1. Either it was redacted or there, there were just few, too few numbers in the sample to be used. And then if you take a look at um, our levelized cost compared to EIA, we had higher numbers for two reasons. One is the difference in the capacity factor, and the other is the difference um, in the fact that we added on imposed costs. Uh, you'll also see um, a footnote that says that these costs for wind and solar could actually be $25 to $50 higher per megawatt hour. Um, and we get those numbers from looking at a previous study that Tom Tanton and George Taylor did looking at wind. 
And what they did was they changed EIA's 30-year assumption to 20 years for wind, and they found that that added an extra $11 per megawatt hour to the levelized cost. Um, in the UK, they've done a study of 3,000 wind turbines, and they found that their operating lifetime is really only 12 to 15 years. And in their 15th year, they're operating at a far less utilization factor than in their, 12th, than in their first or second year. Um, so that was a legitimate change that the Taylor and Tanton paper did. They also realized that wind units that have the best resources are located in remo remote areas. And as a result, there are additional trans transmission costs that need to be added in above what EIA assumed. So their estimate for those transmission costs were another $27 per megawatt hour. So for them, it was an extra $38 per megawatt hour, even above the imposed cost, which is in the $25 to $50 range. Um, the next chart shows how the fleet average capacity factors affected the calculation. The first column are the average fleet capacity factors in 2015. The second column are the numbers that EIA used, the best case capacity factors, and the third column is the ratio. There are two technologies, nuclear and solar photovoltaics, that actually had higher capacity factors in 2015 than what EIA used. Well, what we did was we applied those capacity factor adjustments to the fixed costs of each of these technologies. The fixed costs come directly from EIA. They're in the first column of this chart. The uh, adjustment factor is in the second column. And then in the third column, you see the adjusted fixed cost after we apply the adjustment multiplier. Um, the fourth column is the variable cost. And here we backed out EIA's uh, forecasted fuel price and used the 2015 delivered fuel price. Uh, the chart title says 2014, and that's a typo. And then you can see in the last column the numbers that we got for the levelized cost. Uh, the imposed cost number for wind, we estimated at $26 per megawatt hour and for solar PV at $31 per megawatt hour. Now this chart shows the comparison between the levelized cost for existing units and those with the real world capacity factors and the 2015 delivered fuel prices. And for instance, you can see combined cycle gas we found to be 61% higher than the existing units. For nuclear, we found them to be 210% higher. But what we really want you to look at is the existing cost for conventional coal and nuclear and compare that to the cost that we got for wind and solar. And the reason why we want you to do that comparison is because um, what we're doing is we're prematurely retiring some of these units. And as an example, you can see or take Diablo Canyon in uh, Northern California. PG&E has been pressured to retire two of their nuclear units and uh, they anticipate doing that in the next several years. And what they intend to replace them with is wind, solar, and efficiency improvements or demand-side management. And they claim that they can do this without adding any cost. Well, we don't think that makes any sense. And in fact, we see the cost of retiring these coal and nuclear units prematurely to be two and a half to five times higher uh, when you replace them with renewable units. And in fact, they probably will end up building some new combined cycle um, gas units because of the backup power that they need. Uh, my next chart indicates that everything new is expensive, and if it ain't broke, you shouldn't replace it. And here we're comparing two vehicles. Um, some people like to replace their vehicles, but it's usually because they want a new toy or they prefer a different model. Um, and in fact, uh, personally, I have a 2012 BMW. Every month, the BMW dealer sends me an email telling me how much they want to trade in my car and how much they'll give me. But what they want to give me is only a third of the cost I paid for it. So I refuse to uh, just lose the other two thirds of the initial cost for the vehicle, even though they have a buyer that they want for it. 
Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't make the change. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, in the next chart, I wanted to talk about solar a little bit more and uh, the issue with the imposed cost. In this chart, you can see solar production in the bottom curve, the red curve. And this is a day of September 3rd in California. And solar, of course, was producing in the middle of the day. The top line, the blue line, is demand um, at that time on September 3rd. And the yellow curve is the difference between the total demand and the uh, solar production. So that's net demand, and you can see that in yellow. And uh, the point here is that peak demand occurred around 8 p.m. in the evening. And by that time, there was no solar. So it, had, it wasn't contributing any, any capacity value to the grid. Um, this curve is considered, or the net demand curve is considered a duck curve because the silhouette looks like a duck. Now, in the next chart, you can see the net demand or the duck curve. And here, this is another day in California, March 31st. And here you can see that the addition of um, solar production in each year, and this is an estimate where they expect solar to increase each year, lowers the belly of the curve, but it actually does nothing to uh, change peak demand. So it's supplying very little capacity value towards it. And uh, as a result, that's giving us the imposed costs because we've backed out the conventional technologies for the solar. And not only have we backed those out, but now we need a ramp of 13,000 megawatts in three hours, which means more fuel. It's just like you were driving your car in stop and go traffic, and that's, that uses more fuel. So this is going to use more fuel as you ramp up those technologies. Uh, I'm going to, based on time, go to the last chart, which essentially indicates the references to the study. Uh, we did two levelized cost studies and uh, one included wind, and the second one included wind and solar. And you can see where you can uh, look at those studies from this chart. I've also included EIA's levelized cost study and our responses to both the uh, American Wind Energy Association and the Solar Energy Industry Association's critique to our study. Thank you. <laughs>